Hey all, my name is James Isaac. If you don't know me, I'm the student pastor here at ACF Four Points. I want to share with you a verse that the Lord uh, has been laying on my heart through this season. Um, with everything going on and a lot of turbulence in the world around us, but even personally, uh, there's it's a season of my life where this theme of peace is where I've been seeking after God, and, and, and the Lord really laid on my heart Romans 5, verses 1 through 5. And I want to read it for you all and break it down a little bit and then and use a little bit at the end of an illustration to, to help you remember uh, some of the, the practice that we talk about here in Romans 5. It starts off in verse 1. It says this, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through, the Lord, through Lord Jesus Christ. Through Him, we have also obtained access by faith into His grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in the glory of God. Now, I want to pause there because I love that phrase, obtained access. See, oftentimes, I have the the tendency to view Scripture and to view grace as I'm just a, a common criminal that's been forgiven of a crime. But Romans takes it a step further, and, and here, as, as the authors indicate, we have obtained access. So it's not just a simple pardon of the crime that has been committed. We have been invited into a place of high favor with God. It, it would be like being in the courtroom and, and not just being acquitted of the crime, but being invited to, uh, to sit alongside of the judge. We have been granted high access into grace. It goes on, it talks about rejoicing in hope. And if you look at, back to the Old Testament, the idea of rejoicing, it's synonymous with joy. And it's the idea to shine, to shine in the midst of darkness. And I don't have to tell you all right now, there's a lot of darkness, a lot of uncertainty in the world around us. So we've been given access and the ability to shine in the midst of darkness. It continues on, it says this, Not only that, but we rejoice, shine, in our sufferings knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Now, I want to end with that that last verse in verse 5, and I love the analogy there, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. See, what happens so often, at least for me in my life, is is I have the tendency to, uh, through the course of of living life, is is if this were to represent our life and this were to represent all of the things in our life that that are essentials or, or things that we pursue, is we spend so much time pouring into things that are things that are good, things that are essential, right? Maybe it's our job, maybe it's our hobbies, maybe it's our kids. Maybe it's just, uh, just everything that, that, that consumes our life. It's just this constant pour into our life. And what happens so often is, is as we're pouring and we're filling, ourself, filling ourselves up with all of these things is that, that we find that, you know, there's things in our lives that have taken the place of God. And I think the tendency, at least for me, is, is to, to approach these things and say, you know what, well, I need to get rid of some of these things in my life in order to make room for God. And, and what we start doing is we start scooping the water out and scooping these things out in our, in our lives, and it ends up being just this chaotic mess. And what I love about Romans is it rechannels, it helps us to rethink and to reframe our approach. Rather than trying to empty ourselves of all of the things around us, what the Bible talks about is this pouring in of the Spirit. And so it looks something like this. Rather than trying to go to the effort of of emptying this container of all that's within it and emptying our lives of of all of these things that that distract us, what it simply equates to is is as we go to God in Scripture, as we go to God in prayer, as as we ask for the Holy Spirit, He then pours into us. And there's this pouring, this replacement within our lives of God's spirit, of God's presence. And, and if I had enough water here, it would be this outpouring, this overflowing into all of the areas around us, affected as the spirit pours into us. As we fill ourselves with God's spirit, there's an overflowing that happens in our lives. And I want to encourage you all in that today. Um, don't chase after all these things of, I, I've got to do this, I've got to do this. Simply 
lean into the word, lean into prayer, and allow the Holy Spirit to fill you. And from that is the overflowing in your life and in the lives of those around you. Thank you. Have a great day.